Um, the difference between wormholes and portal nests, as I now call them, is that um, with a wormhole, there's travel, and um, I believe Leonard Susskind says that it's an infinite distance, an infinite space time to be reached, to be reached before you can make a connection to the other side of a um, EPR uh, uh, EPR uh, bridge between wormholes. Um, I understand it that that Susskind did, but there's an infinite expanse of space, time, time space, whatever that you have to cross before you can get to the end, to the center of a wormhole and meet up with your partner on the other side. That's infinite, it takes travel, and it's within reality, it's just within space time. Portal Ness, on the other hand, would be instantaneous. You could instantly communicate to a non local realities far away through. Um, artificial means, artificial, um, and stationary. Once it's at, once outside of space, once outside of reality, once outside of the ability to communicate with our reality, it stays fixed in its position. It doesn't move. It doesn't travel. It doesn't create a own wormhole. It's more or less a nest around the stationary portal um, and it's outside of reality. It's instantaneous communication with reality is far away, stationary, it doesn't move once it's disconnected from our reality, from light and matter, force and particle. Um, once outside our reality it stays stationary and that's the solution to the ghost interface and paradox which I'll get to in a second. But it stays stationary. It's outside of our realities, or else it wouldn't be stationary. And it's instantaneous communication with um, reality, non local realities. Wormholes, what they're doing with entanglement, ER, EPR, ER equals NPR. Leonard Susskind himself said that um, travel to a wormhole would be prohibited because of the infinite distance it would take to reach the center. You could reach the center, but it would take an infinite time and distance. It involves travel, movement, because it's within our realities. And there's going to be movement no matter what you do, through time or space. As long as you're within reality, there's going to be some sort of movement within travel time within reality. The wormhole is infinite, it involves travel, and it's within our realities. Porto Ness would be instantaneous, would be stationary, and for that reason, because it's outside of our realities. So if it can't interact with anything within our reality, then there's a no cause for change for movement or displacement. Um, so if this is a, if you can't visualize, if you can't see this, this is a diagram idea. It may not be right with the wave function idea, but a portal would be fixed in this position wherever it blinks on it and beyond the symbiotic homeostasis that connects the outside reality to the inside reality. It would be fixed in within nested inside of reality. Won't be no hole for travel, won't be no tunneling, no wormhole tunneling, no movement at all. It would be fixed. And that I believe is a solution to the ghost interfacing paradox. Because if you don't have any movement in the first place, there's no way for portals to interact with each other to either go 
through each other and detect each other, or not go through each other and not detect each other, or any combination of them. Um, if you can't move through space, time, or reality in general, there's no way of bumping into another portal. And so you, you're not, then the paradox doesn't even arise. The ghost interface and paradox. Um, you can't detect, or you can't touch, and you can't um, be detected. And why can't touch you? Once a portal is blinked on in our reality, it stays stationary in its time and space. So it is in the other portal. Twin portals with the same properties as each other. So, um, by being stationary, portal nests, portal nests, instantaneous, stationary, out of our realities. And by staying stationary, that resolves the ghost interface and paradox. I think that's the solution to the ghost interface and paradox. And, um, or it's a good candidate for it. But portal nests are stationary in the wormholes. It takes infinite time to collapse. It takes travel, of course, because it takes time and space. And it's within our realities. It may not, it, popularly, it may not seem like wormholes are within our realities, but they have points that connect one part of reality to another. These are holes, worm holes, actual holes in a reality. These are portal nests, but they are holes, but they don't go anywhere, they don't travel, they don't create worm holes, they create nests, pockets, I guess it would be another name, pockets of the stationary existence outside of reality. Outside of reality, reality is plural. And uh, um, this, I believe, is a fascinating pop, pop, property of portal nests. It's complete opposite wormholes. Wormholes is a ER equals EPR in today's current work on wormholes and entanglement. With portal nests, you can instantly talk to and communicate with other realities. And that, uh, that allows for uh, entanglement in a different way. Entanglement with yourself in the portal, in the portal, and the world, the reality that you communicate with. Um, it's an entanglement with our many selves in the many worlds and in the multiverse. Wormholes are being discussed and talked about all the time, and portal nests is something new, I think. Something that people aren't really going to right now. But uh, portal nests, the very act of being stationary, gives you a lot more advantages than something that requires time to change and stuff. Um, Again, wormholes are infinite, takes travel time within realities, points in reality. Portal nets are instantaneous, stationary, instantaneous by way of artificial simulation. Stationary, can't move, 